Here we go. All right. Hmm. Everybody seems to be avoiding C4 these days. I'm not sure I understand why. Okay, so we transpose into a Slav reversed, and I'm just going to Fianchetto against that. Um, okay, and now we've transposed into a Tarash, a tempo up. Or, um, I guess you could also classify this as, what's it called? What's it called? Oh, my knight was... My knight's typically on d e4 in this analogous position. I forget what it's called, though. The one where white typically gives up the pawn on c4 and lands a knight on e5. Um, it's nice to give these things a name. Okay, so I light up my queen not only with the pawn, but with this shot. Not that that's going to happen anytime soon, but... Um, and where does my knight belong? I want to hit this pawn. I really want it. I'm such a greedy materialist, and that works so contrary to my ability to make progress. Okay. I guess we're going to exchange there. So I'll just keep winning Tempi. Hopefully at some point um, I'll have enough Tempi saved up that I can do something with them. Yeah, so let's bring the Rooks to d8 and c8. My opponent's moving very quickly for um, this being a classical game. It's like he's trying to run me out of time, but that's not going to happen at this time control. At least it shouldn't happen. You saw last game it almost happened. Um, and that I was just under time pressure last game. My opponent was up by two minutes. Um, and it, it did influence my play, and it did uh, cause me to blunder from a better position. So there is reason to playing quickly, but it's not so you can win on time, it's so you can outplay your opponent. And if you're going to play bad moves, um, it's hard to outplay your opponent, unless you can force them to somehow play worse than you're playing. Alright, so this knight secures the pawn. But that, I mean, that's the weakest possible way to secure it, right? <laughs> and this knight could be kicked at any time. So... I guess I want to kick it. I'm not really seeing any reason to avoid kicking it. Other than it would just move to c3 and then e6 would become weak. So I think I want my rook here. Although, then he plays knight d6. Um, hmm. I mean, tactically, this can't be justified for white. I'm just trying to figure out why not. Also, I don't want to hang this b7 pawn. Um. It did occur to me that I could play knight a5 here. Forces queen to move then play f5, force the knight to move, then move something. I'm not sure how this would go, though. Actually, yeah, knight a5 would force the queen off this diagonal. Um, man, this is confusing. Because a5 is not where I want my knight to stay. Um, but this does force the queen to an inferior square and does allow my queen more squares than it can go to. Um, okay, so we're going to hit the queen. 
I expect queen b6, and we'll trade there, and then I'll play rook b5 and collect my pawn. Not only collecting my pawn, but also attacking b2, and trying to collect that one as well. Okay, so my opponent's not playing into that. I don't blame him. Um... Yeah, I guess I hit the knight. It'd be nice to get some kind of concession out of white, but... Um, I'm not seeing anything. I could play queen e5, drop my knight, and take his knight, and they've got all kinds of pressure, but that's just temporary. Material is eternal. <laughs> Uh, okay, well here we go. I'm not sure I believe in this move, but I'm down 2 minutes 10 seconds. So I'm going to play this and hope it works. And then I was intending to follow with rook e8. So that's how I shall follow here. And this knight, in my opinion, is misplaced. I mean, sure, it's nice for bug house. You just drop a pawn on f7 and bam, it's over. But this isn't bug house. Um, yeah, so finally I get to collect some material. But we'll start by getting this knight distant from my king so I don't like hang my king somehow you know I would if I could all right I think I follow with rook takes pawn although this makes it more difficult well no my knight can then move to c4 so I'm not complicating my development at all with this I just can't move the knight to c6 anymore um, without donating a rook. So I've leveled the material. Um, it took me 20 moves to get an equal position. Contrast this with, say, your typical 2000 who actually knows openings and can equalize a lot easier than I can. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so I don't want to give up. Oh, shoot. It's got messy. I'm trying to keep things simple, but no, my opponent insists on making them interesting. So, he's threatening um, b4, but I could take on c1, and he takes something. There's so many things going on here. I could also play rook c4. This is my backup plan, although that drops my knight, so rook c1 it is. And for the moment, I'm up a bishop. Um, I'll take two rooks for my queen. And get my knight to safety somehow. It's kind of ugly uh, how exposed my king is. Um, so what do I do here? kingdom for a tempo. I could use a tempo here. Okay, I think this is safe. 
I think I'm not losing my entire army if I play this. It's kind of hard to tell. So I think I want my rook to be on c2 rather than c1. Although it has some advantages to being on c1 also, and that it can break this pin. Um, yeah, here we go. So I'm sacking my b-pawn, going for mate. It's probably not going to work. Um, but active play is a good thing. Just in general. I'm not saying this specific plan's gonna work. But, um. Uh, everywhere I move, I keep seeing ways he can fork my pieces. Um. I think, though, with. Actually, queen b2 gives up the queen, so never mind on that fork. Um. So I've divided his army and now I'm moving to try to collect that pawn while trying to close in on the king at the same time. It's very delicate. Um, if I could somehow land a pawn on h4 safely that would greatly simplify this endeavor. Um, Okay, well, this just got ugly. As if it weren't already ugly, but um, we've got to push. I've got no time to think. I'm running out on the clock. But, you know, these things can happen. Um, these are the risks I take by going into a queen versus minor pieces endgame. Okay. This secures the knight which allows me to push g4. Also, I'm setting up a future bishop d6 shot. It's subtle, but it's there. Oh, that drops the knight. GG. Um... Unless I have some counter shot, which is equally effective, but I don't know. So I've given up heavy amounts of material. Um, this is going to be really hard to hold.
Okay, so my king advances on the knight. And I think I'm winning the knight. And I've done this without hanging my rook. And without allowing my opponent to do... Well, he, he gained all these pawns for the knight. These pawns will be menacing for the remainder of the game. Um, which won't be much longer, that's for sure. Um, yeah, so if he knows what he's doing, he's going to play the predictable move, and it's good. Um, yep, he did it. Well played. I'm curious, um, where did I specifically mess this up? Other than the fact that I didn't know the opening. Yeah, you call this a reversed queen's gambit. I guess that's what it is. Um, so this I have not seen before. Because this gives me a pawn structure, like, usually my knight would be on this kind of square in this pawn structure, but this is different. Um, and I guess what that means is c4 compels me to take on d4. So I think that's the lesson of the game, is that um, if I don't want to give away my pawn on c5, and my opponent plays this full center and I don't have time, or rather if I'm going to fianchetto here, um, then I need to trade here first and then fianchetto. I think that strategic blunder just put tremendous pressure on black the rest of the game. Although it wasn't until... Um, Goodness. Oh, right, right. So I saw rook c4, I saw rook c1, and I saw rook b5, but I forgot about it. Rook b5 was what I was actually intending to do here, and I was actually okay. But, I mean, having played all these weird moves, I was in a position I didn't recognize. And so, sure, I had this option to play rook b5, and it would have been okay. But I didn't see it, because I'm not familiar with this kind of um, really irregular structure. But suppose I did play this. I don't know. I'm not quite... okay. not quite buying that this is so easy for black. Yeah, I guess you can trade on b2. That makes a lot of sense. And then knight c4. So I need to develop rapidly here. Uh, I don't know that white would go for this. Trading on that square makes sense, but I think white would follow with something like rook c2. And probably queen b3 and try to get a4 in. And unless my attack happens very efficiently here, uh, I'm just going to get overrun. So this is still quite difficult and being forced to play f5 earlier, and I don't th I think I was forced to play it. Apparently not. Apparently Stockfish just says I'm okay here. Um, I don't see any particular plan for black, but apparently I'm okay. Let's see what it suggests. I mean, it says... okay, so it's saying all kinds of things. It's saying h6, it said knight c6 earlier. Uh, I guess h6 is fine. I don't think Stockfish appreciates this position. And I think this isn't as easy as you or I might imagine it to be at first. Okay, so suppose I do play this. Yeah, white's just going to develop. Okay, somehow now pushing f5 is better than it was in the game. Stockfish didn't like this f5 move in the game. Um, although, I'm not sure why not. Okay, so apparently rook b1 was a mistake of some sort. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, so I needed to push h6 first, and then f5. And this would have secured e6, so I wouldn't be prone to this queen a4 move. That's the ticket. That's what I was missing here. Um, 
F5 I played was premature. And my position just wasn't ready for it. And it was because of things like this that I got low on time. And it was because I got low on time that I just lost. From what should have been a good position, but um, I just misplayed it. Yeah, no, taking the pawn... I don't think taking the pawn is best. I should just bring my knight back and be okay here. But yeah, lesson learned. Um, one, try to stick with positions you're familiar with and get familiar with more positions. Um, so, yeah, this D takes C5. Sure, actually this is probably okay. But I just need to get familiar with what my options are here. I could run this kind of like a Sicilian... Well, there are Sicilian positions where the d3 square is weak. So say we see this, and we exchange over here. How am I doing here? Yeah, I saw that white has this kind of possibility in general. So I discounted this... Um, I guess white has to take some time... Um, blocking this diagonal one way or another. Yeah, stop the bishop from getting in. But, I don't know. Like, as great as this is, um, where was c4? Here's c4. Um, yeah, I think just taking either one of these pawns should be okay. Like, I could take there, and he takes back, and... I mean, this would have been perfectly fine for black, and this is more what I'm familiar with. So, I should just try to avoid not dropping pawns in the opening, and try to get positions I know what to do with. Now, I'm sure some of you are more curious about the end of the game. <laughs> Thirty-two G four threatens mate in two. Thirty-two G four. Um, is this the G four we're talking about, or thirty-two G five rather? You're saying threatens a mate in two. Um, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, oh, I see it now, yeah. That's not so obvious, and White might have fallen into that. Yeah, this gives the king an escape square. But that, that's something I should remember in these kinds of attacks as well, is that um, the rook here followed by knight there can sometimes be enough to trap the king. He might have fallen for this, and this would have been a really good shot to try for. Um, and it would have been less risky than... Well, I guess I played rook a1. Yeah... Yeah, I just needed to keep my pieces flexible, and I just didn't do that. But I was lost at this point anyhow. Um, but, um... It's an interesting game. Uh, so yeah, I'm under 2,000 again. But one day, someday, eventually we'll make it there. It'll take time, it'll take effort, it'll take some discipline, because, you know, anybody who's seen me play Blitz knows I play just about anything in a Blitz game opening, and so I need to figure out how in these openings not to get outmaneuvered each time. And I did try the C5, because, um, sure, I don't know it so well, and I'm more familiar with things like Knight F6, or C6, or G6, like... But I'm trying to expand my repertoire a little bit, 
and try to play accurate moves, and I feel that the C5 is accurate. Um, I just need to learn how to play it better. So I think this is instructive in that on multiple levels, um, showing that one, I just don't understand when this tension gets resolved, and two, if the tension gets resolved by white taking on c5 at some point, I just didn't understand how to pursue those positions as black. And then now, as a result of this game, I've seen like four or five different ideas that I can try in future games. So even though I lost a game and lost 20 rating points, um, I think that was 20 rating points well spent. So anyhow, thanks to one and all for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And I'll hope to see you guys around next time.